Dr. Sonali Chandra and I welcome you all to our YouTube channel Medicine Decoded. Now in this video I am going to give you a brief overview and understanding of anticoagulation in pregnant women with heart disease. Now to begin with there can be women who have mechanical heart valves in place or with atrial fibrillation or with corrected congenital heart diseases. Now these are the set of women who are anyways on long term anticoagulation therapy for their own health and then they can go on to becoming pregnant. So the first question that arises is that should they be continuing with anticoagulation during pregnancy as well. Now on one hand there are concerns regarding anticoagulation. Uh, these agents can have uh, fetal effects, then there is risk of maternal bleeding with anticoagulation therapy particularly during delivery. Then there are concerns regarding the use of neuraxial analgesia and anesthesia during labor and delivery. So there are concerns regarding anticoagulation on one hand. However, if she uh, does not continue with anticoagulation during pregnancy, she runs the risks of having a wall thrombosis or even life-threatening thromboembolism. So when you compare the risks versus the benefits, then yes, these women need to continue with their anticoagulation during pregnancy as well. Then the next question that arises is, what should be the choice of anticoagulation during pregnancy? Now let's compare warfarin versus heparin. Now, warfarin freely crosses the placenta, reaches the fetus, and is considered teratogenic, right? Now, there are concerns and risks of uh, warfarin-associated embryopathy, particularly if used between 6 to 12 weeks of gestation. That's the period of organogenesis. There are also concerns regarding risks of miscarriage, risks of fetal intracranial hemorrhage. Warfarin crosses the placenta, reaches the fetus, can cause fetal anticoagulation as well. So, increased risk of fetal intracranial hemorrhage, increased risk of uh, stillbirth. So, all in all, overall, yes, heparin is much safer as far as the fetus is concerned. However, for these heart diseases associated conditions, long term basis, warfarin is considered to be a better anticoagulation therapy. So, we have to strike a balance. And in general, during pregnancy, till 12 weeks of gestation, heparin is more preferable concerning the uh, teratogenic effects of uh, warfarin. Uh, between 12 to 36 weeks, warfarin is more preferable. And after 36 weeks of gestation, you see, now we are anticipating that the woman could go into labor, she'll go on to deliver right and then in that point in time uh, if she is already uh, anticoagulated on warfarin then the fetus will also be anticoagulated now during the course of vaginal delivery with fetal head compression there will be further increased risk of fetal intracranial hemorrhage right so yes beyond 36 weeks heparin is more preferable right more so if during the course of uh, delivery she happens to have excessive uh, vaginal bleeding or for any other emergency situations if reversal of anticoagulation is required then yes an antidote of uh, heparin is there which is protamine sulfate and no such antidote uh, uh, you know exists for warfarin therefore from 36 weeks onwards heparin is more preferable and uh, after delivery, she has to be uh, switched back to uh, warfarin, just like uh, in a non-pregnant uh, situation, right? So let's now go a little bit more deeper into the recommendations for anticoagulation during pregnancy uh, in women with heart disease particularly. And I have taken this up. My reference textbook is Williams Obstetrics, uh, the 26th edition. So I'll give you a brief overview. However, let me emphasize that all these adjustments needs to be done with expert cardiologist consultation at every point in time. So let's overview the recommendations for anticoagulation. And the basic change here is about the baseline warfarin dosage and the risk of embryopathy, right? So it has been suggested that when the baseline warfarin dosage is less than or equal to 5 milligram per day, then the risks of a warfarin associated embryopathy are less than 3% comparable to heparin usage and can be considered an acceptable level of risk. And with appropriate counseling, yes, women can be allowed to continue the warfarin as well. However, if the baseline warfarin dosage is more than 5 mg per day, then the risk of warfarin-associated embryopathy, they are, uh, have been shown in studies to exceed 8%, which is a significant amount of risk. And therefore, in the first trimester, it is, woman is converted to heparin therapy. 
Now we have two agents. We have low molecular weight heparin. We have unfractionated heparin. Now low molecular weight heparin is preferred over unfractionated heparin, particularly because of the ease of administration. First of all, right, uh, daily or uh, twice daily dosages, subcutaneous injections can be given, and on a long term usage, low molecular weight heparin is associated with significantly less amount of side effects, heparin associated side effects. as compared to unfractionated heparin so first trimester convert to heparin and in the second and third trimester she should be back on warfarin now whether she has been converted back to warfarin second or third trimester or she has continued warfarin from the very beginning at 36 weeks she is converted back to low molecular weight heparin or iv unfractionated heparin and like i told you low molecular weight heparin is preferable now moving on further around the time of delivery more so at the actual moment of delivery you see we want the woman to be not on any anticoagulation right because for that moment if she is anticoagulated she will run the risk of bleeding so around the time of delivery peri delivery i have to taper off the anticoagulation right eventually stop the anticoagulation now for that situation peri delivery period iv unfractionated heparin is preferable to low molecular weight heparin because it can be titrated easily right so if uh, there is iv unfractionated heparin and you stop the iv unfractionated heparin dose then the effect of anticoagulation uh, is reversed in another 4 to 6 hours now with that logic yes peri delivery iv unfractionated heparin is preferred over low molecular weight heparin and all this can be materialized and all this can be achieved only when we have an ideally a planned delivery in these uh, women is undertaken so at 36 weeks onwards we had converted to low molecular weight heparin right if we've done that yes around 36 hours prior to the scheduled delivery day she should be switched to iv unfractionated heparin right now if she is being planned for a vaginal delivery then iv unfractionated heparin needs to stop in active labor because we are anticipating that you know she will be delivering in another 4 to 6 uh, hours at most in minimum and if she is being planned for a cesarean delivery then iv unfractionated heparin needs to stop 4 to 6 hours prior to the planned cesarean section and we need to confirm that she is off the anticoagulation by you know seeing a normal aptt value and then put her up for a cesarean section now whether we have achieved a vaginal delivery or a cesarean delivery after delivery she has to be restarted on her anticoagulation again right so this can start uh, about 4 hours after a vaginal delivery safely about 6 to 12 hours after a cesarean section safely however again expert consultation is required at each step it can be uh, changed on a case to case basis as well so postpartum we have to restart iv unfractionated heparin along with warfarin and once the inr goal has been achieved then unfractionated heparin can be stopped and warfarin will continue as she was on warfarin during the non pregnant uh, situation as well so when we look at the set of recommendations we realize the importance of achieving a planned delivery and planning for a planned delivery in the set of women and achieving a delivery in a center with expert cardiologist consultation available all the time right now having said that yes there can be a situation that a woman is on low molecular weight heparin and the time to switch her to unfractionated heparin did not come or it could not be achieved or for whatever reason she goes into labor while on low molecular weight heparin right then in that situation we need to stop the low molecular weight heparin and a vaginal delivery is preferable uh, in this circumstance as well it can be achieved however if a woman is on warfarin and then she goes into labor let's say for example she had to be switched over to heparin right in the peri delivery period and that time could not come or for whatever reason it has not been done then if she is already on warfarin she goes into labor 
we are expecting that the fetus will be anticoagulated so if you're going to push on for a vaginal delivery then there is increased risk of fetal intracranial hemorrhage so in this situation we yes stop warfarin and a cesarean delivery is preferable for the fetuses sake in this situation however in both the situations the woman is on some sort of anticoagulation and has gone into labor so she runs the risk of bleeding complications during the course of delivery and that's why i said that an expert cardiologist consult is very very important uh, for taking a consult regarding the reversal of anticoagulation right like for example if she is already on warfarin and we are planning for a cesarean delivery for the fetus sake then we can't do a cesarean or can't plan for a cesarean if she is you know on anticoagulation so yes reversal of anticoagulation in that situation can be achieved with uh, you know uh, prothrombin concentrates and small dosage of vitamin k can also be given and once uh, she's uh, the effect of anticoagulation is over a cesarean can be done so for that expert consult is required if she is on low molecular weight heparin she goes into labor right then yes we need expert consultation to understand uh, if the low molecular weight heparin uh, reversal is required with protamine sulfate however protamine sulfate uh, reverses the effect of uh, iv unfractionated heparin completely and partially does so for low molecular weight heparin so there these are issues regarding uh, the reversal of anticoagulation which need to be dealt with uh, you know with expert cardiologist consultation only so yes these are the recommendations i've given you a brief overview as undergraduate students you need to know the very basics and need to know this much at least regarding the anticoagulation for heart disease in pregnancy for those of you who need to even understand it uh, you know deeper like for example if you are a post graduate student want to know suggested reading then i would like you to go through this uh, society for maternal fetal medicine consult uh, recommendations regarding anti coagulation in pregnant patients with cardiac disease and this came up in august 2022 it's a very good article and a very um, explains a lot of issues regarding uh, anti coagulation pregnant patients with cardiac disease it's available free on the website it's available free on the web so it's you know uh, for free reading you need to subscribe to the journal for this so um, thank you so much i hope this clarifies and gives you an understanding of the important topic thank you Thank you.